Good morning, good morning. Arizona Trail Showdown begins today. If we are coming through loud and clear, please let us know in the chat. Um, your host, Jamil Curry, here with Bryce Brooks. Good morning, Jamil. How are you feeling about this? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, uh, checking the weather. Could be a little spicy on the southern terminus. We shall see. Uh, last I saw, Ben had the cowboy hat on. Looked like he was ready to go, so. Yeah. Uh, if you're just tuning in and don't know much about the Arizona Trail Showdown, this is going to be an epic, I think maybe first of its kind. We have Ben Light and Michael McKnight racing each other on the Arizona Trail going after the FKT, the fastest known time. They're trying to break 13 days. How many hours is it? I should know this off. This is like a quick I'm gonna test. I'm going to check. Uh, oh. 13, it's like 13 and a half days set by Joe McConaughey in 2021. So... Um, we're actually going to go live right now to Ben um, on the Mexico border. We'll just go right into it here. Ben, can you hear us? We could hear him a second ago. Um, we might need you guys. We were just chatting with him right before this, so... Ben, can you hear us? He is down by the Mexico border. There's actually about a 1.8 mile hike. Oh, they can hear us just fine. Um, we can't hear you at the moment. Let's see. Well, we'll see if we can get some audio on them, but uh, he is about to set off. He has a 1.8 mile hike to get down to the Mexico border. I think from what I remember, it's a pretty easy downhill. Yeah, maybe not, to as, get down there. not as easy on the way back up. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a bit of a climb, but this is the trailhead here that is uh, is right near the Mexico border. We were just talking to him. It's about a um, about 66 degrees out right now down there. Yep. So it's a, it's a nice cool morning. We've got some storms rolling through Arizona today and we'll see how that affects him as he heads up to the high point on the Arizona trail near Miller peak. You can see it's already cloudy. Uh, we were looking at the radar this morning a little bit and it looked like there might be a hot spot going over right where the peak is. Um, I believe the, uh, the bathtub springs water refill is actually up there too. If you haven't been up there before, once Ben gets to the top, there's actually a spring that comes out of the mountain and just flows directly into a bathtub that somebody had dropped up there. So I'm thinking that that might be his first water resupply, depending on how much he's packing out. For sure. I think we might have audio on you guys now. Ben. Yeah, I think, oh. I think yep. so. You got I it can, now? Yeah, we got it now. Hey, guys. Hey. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, 13 days, three hours, 21 minutes. There it is. He's, he's got it for us. He's got that number <laughs> in his mind. Um, how you feeling oh, this morning, been... Ben? Are you excited to get rolling? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering, do I really need to carry this pack down two miles just to carry it back up two miles <laughs> to come right back through here? I just need to take my tracker, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a supported effort, so I think uh, you can certainly I was like, take like whatever you want. Going, well, I don't need all this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I think that's just the, every, every little bit counts, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, I mean, water. Yeah, I mean, Joe, in his documentary that just came out, I mean, there were times when he was just running with, like, a bottle, I think. Yeah. I, yeah. Say, take what the trail can give you. Absolutely. Take the Okay. I'll just leave this up here, hang it from the side. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna head down and... Uh, with my phone down below. Right in there. Are you even on? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you still. You're a little choppy, but we can still see you and hear you. So, oh. yeah. 
So I'm you're going to head, I'm gonna head gonna... down right now. And uh, yeah, I got a two mile hike down to the border to start. And then uh, I'll see if I have service. I have service. I'll check back in. If not, I'll, when I get back up here, probably around 8 20, 8 30, you know, go Sayonara. Awesome. We'll keep an eye out for you, Ben. Have a great trek down there. Hopefully, we'll we'll get a check in from the border. Love you, baby. Love you. Ah, that's exciting, and I think that is going to be one advantage for the southbound route is not having to walk an extra <laughs> one point eight miles to the start of the trail. That's true. He does have this little bit of extra to do. Um, it was really funny when so I was crewing and pacing for Michael Versteeg when he did the trail back in 2016, I think it was. And I did the final, um, the final night with him, which was from, um, Parker Canyon Lake to the border. So went through the whole okay. night with him up and over the peak. Yep. We were so tired at that point. And we arrived, I think, within like an hour or so of sunrise to the Mexico border. Oh, did you? Oh, that's you didn't sleep. It's an FKT. I'm thinking in my head, you got up to the top of this and then like laid out a sleeping bag. And you no, this is no, you well, guys are yeah, FKT. And it yeah. was like the final push. So we got to the Mexico border. Like there's just this little obelisk and there's a little barbed wire fence. Right. And we brought like a sleeping bag for him. Cause he's like, I am so tired. I'm not going to be able to make it back up to the cars. Like, I just want to sleep right at the border. I don't care. Um, so we rolled it out. Um, uh, do you have an update for us? You're just listening in. Um, and so, yeah, I remember I, I didn't have a sleeping bag with me. So I just like, huddled up in the oh, dirt no. and just took a little dirt nap and like so did the rest of the crew that was with us we were just kind of just kind of sitting there uh it's so but, exposed too it's not like you could even take shelter in any trees like. oh no but then i mean i think we slept maybe an hour okay. and then it was just one of the most incredible sunrises i've ever mm. seen it was, it was really cool that's neat so ben's off huh he's off that is awesome kind of been waiting for this moment for a while <laughs> yeah this has been a build-up how how long has this been in the works like a couple of years right i think they talked about it for a couple of years and then kind of a for sure thing as of last spring so, so lots of talk and planning and training through the summer and anticipation and it's kind of crazy it's here <laughs> that is awesome so you'll be you'll be crewing for the entire duration. Yes. Awesome. Have you crewed Ben at any other? Has he done any other long trails or just like the two hundred mile style events? Yeah, his longest is three hundred. So, um, I've crewed him at all of his two hundreds and the two three hundreds, and then yeah. So I feel like. We know what we're doing. Maybe not for this many days. The longest we've done was a 10-day event, and he stayed stationary. So my crewing was just driving um, from the home base back to home to get kids off to school and wash clothes and then go back. So it was, that was a little simpler. I only had one place I had to get to, but... Yeah. What uh, what does your day to day look like? The day to day and crewing. Yep. So, I have learned that as soon as Ben leaves a station, an aid station, to go straight to the next place, get everything ready, and then depending on how much time, I will either sleep or wor work out. I used to bring my bike and trainer a lot, or I would run, but. There was no room for my bike this time, so I got denied. So I brought weights and my trail shoes. So, um, And then any other prep, once he gets closer to coming in, get his protein shakes, um, food. And you guys know with trail runners, it's kind of a guessing game of what they want to eat and will eat and having options. And 
So, yeah, just trying to figure that out. Surprise him with special things, cold drinks. Um, I mean, in the past, I would bring my pizza, but we're not doing pizza, so i got to get creative. <laughs> yeah, he's on the, like, what, is it low, lower-carb diet, both these guys? I mean, they've got to be consuming carbs on something like this. For sure. For sure. Like, like day-to-day, they eat lower-carb, but they still take in quite a bit, more than I think most people think they do. Um, you know, they in their training, their volume's high, so they're eating potatoes, they're eating fruit. Um, and then in an event like this, of course, all their goos, lots of potato, lots of fruit, um, grain-free tortilla chips. Um, but they're just, they're both staying gluten-free. So anything that's gluten-free, I have gluten-free wraps and that type of thing. But yeah, lots of carbs and fat. Ben said that he wanted to have steak every night. So we have steak, but we'll see how if that gets old. And yeah, I brought an air fryer. I'm going to try using that. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. It's going to be eaten well out there. <laughs> so where will, after he comes back up and meets you at like the mile two mark where you're at right now, where is going to be your next crew location? Like how many miles will he be into his day? When I see him next, he, he'll have 20 miles under his belt. And the plan is to have like a 15 minute break. Um, he, he just said he wanted those short, shorter aid stations to be 10 to 15 minutes and um, do a quick, uh, just a quick, quick refuel. And I mean, at this one, it might be really fast, but yeah. He said he wants a protein shake, um, some type of food, and check, you know, take garbage out. And I, I assume it will be simple. I think the next one's only six miles. Um, yeah. I honestly haven't looked at the the names of these next places yet. So now that I'm in it and I'm in the zone, I'll start Doing <laughs> a little more research, yeah. <laughs> I think... Um, the 20 miles in will probably be the f- just right at- once he leaves the Huachuca Mountains. So he's got to cross the- his first Sky Island. So the southern Arizona, there's the Sky Islands, and they're basically forested mountain peaks that are rising up out of the desert floor, which are it's super cool down there. Um, it's very surprising. The fact that you guys are at, I think, 6,000 feet where you're standing right now, you wouldn't think that would be the case on the border of Mexico. No. Like what is, what is it like out there? Um, it's chilly. Like I can't tell I'm shake I'm shaking a little bit. So the phone might be and that might be nerves. <laughs> sure. <laughs> nerves for Ben. <laughs> nerves for Ben. But um it's a little chilly. Like it feels it's just I mean the weather's perfect actually. Just a little cool for being in the morning. But yesterday we were in Gilbert, Arizona and we slept in and I went for a run about 10 o'clock and it was 86 degrees and I melted. So this is way cooler than Gilbert and it's hard to believe that it's going to be hot and blistering because I'm used to fall weather in Utah. So it might be a little shocking once it gets warmer, but here it's beautiful. It really just feels like the, the mountain air in Utah. Nice. I almost feel like they're, the challenge could not have been planned out to a more perfect date as far as weather is concerned. I think mm-hmm. we have like a cold front coming in for like the next 10 days. I think the high, at least in Phoenix, is like mid to upper 80s. Oh my, is it for that long? Like 10 days? <laughs> That's, I mean, seven I'm, to 10 days out. It looks I'm like sure it's... it'll uh, get hot just in time for Javelina, but that's right. a whole nother story. <laughs> but that's that's going to be oh, great. If, if it can stay cool, um, but, you know, there's some... There are the mountain sky islands, but there's some big desert stretches coming up for Ben here over the next four to five days, like probably mm-hmm. until he gets to like the superstitions, I would say. Yeah. Um, he's the crossing um, the desert between Oracle and the Gila River. Very runnable. That'll be, I think well, he, as long as it's not hot. It's runnable, but I think, I mean, if it's not as hot in the day, Ben can extend his hours. I know mm-hmm. he was planning to travel at night 
for some of those longer desert stretches, right? Yeah, he's hoping to just slowly inch his start time a little later each day so that, um, well, actually by day three, he wants to be um, starting at 6 p.m. because the, there's a big climb that's pretty exposed and he was told um, it would be a lot better at night or when it's cooler. So that's the plan. Just, I think he's going to push it a little longer today, uh, maybe go until midnight and then have a little shorter break than he had planned just to um, get out ahead and try to start at six. Nice. However that works. But he's got it in his head. I'll just be where I need to be. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I wonder um, how far in is Patagonia? I want to say it's like mile 50. Yeah. So he'll definitely get through Patagonia in the first day, which is wild because it's when it's, I was on, when I was on my Arizona trail, it was like, that was, I think day two or something. Yeah. I think I had two more nights on the trail after Patagonia yeah. and I'm thinking mm -hmm. about his, I mean, his day to day. So I was just looking at the elevation a little bit. So where he's going to start at the Mexico border, it's about 5,900 feet of elevation. Um, and then by the time he's back to that parking lot that you're at, uh, it looks like he's going to climb about six to 700 feet. Hundred. Oh, oh, this one just to get Got back it. to oh, okay. Montezuma yeah, yeah. Uh, trailhead. And then the total climb getting up to the top of Miller. So Miller tops out just over 9,000 feet. So it's 3,100. Are you talking your first climb? That's first a, sustained that's a climb. big climb. Right. That's quite the way to kick off the 800 mile. FKT. Yeah. Again, like just the fact that that is the <laughs> highest point on the Arizona trail is just so shocking. I think to, so shocking. to probably to most people. Yeah. I, I mean, like we said last time, like I was totally convinced that snowball was the high, point. right? Like Flagstaff, you think that's gotta be the high. Right. And then here it is Miller peak coming in strong. So it's pretty rad. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's part of the strategy though, is get, a, get the technical, over with first and so it's just a nice smooth easy last 400 miles exactly i mean <laughs> once you get up on top of the mogollon rim it does become easier yeah that's how i mentally broke up the trail yeah uh mm -hmm. yeah north versus south almost like almost a different version of the arizona trail yeah i mean and that's just kind of the the amazing part about the state of arizona is that diversity you really have I think some people have described it as like a microcosm of like the whole Pacific crest trail, but in 800 miles, you get sure. all this variety, you get the deserts and the mountains and the canyons, um, just condensed. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. And um, then, Oh, go ahead. I, I feel like it's, uh, the grand Canyon. Once he gets up there, it's going to be like quite the mental boost. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the final push, right? So once you, once you cross the Canyon, there's really no excuse to stop. Like you just <laughs> need to like push through like one final push. Right. Yeah. Um, just a quick reminder. We, we do have quite a few. Thank you. First off for all of you that have jumped in this morning. This is awesome to see such a great interest in this sort of effort. And we hope to bring you guys, we do plan to bring you daily live streams of this. So we're going to go live at 930 AM. Every single morning of the challenge, it'll be either myself or Bryce or both of us, depending on the day. And we hope to go live for about a half hour and check in with Ben's crew, Mike's crew, or themselves. So we have we have hopefully the ability, depending on cell coverage, to bring them in each day, catch up with them, see how the journey's unfolding. And please do drop your questions in the chat. We want to make this interactive. If you have questions for what's happening? Oh, <laughs> we have a logo over me apparently. So we might want to look into that. Um, <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, we hope to answer your questions. And so if you have them, please drop them in. We can communicate with the crew out there. So there is a question here real quick as we're kind of waiting for the start of this thing. Um, we'll go to the studio for just a quick minute here, but we'll pop back in with you soon. Um, so there's a question here. Are we able to track their trackers online? And this is, for, thank you for your question. And yes, so we'll actually pull it up right now. If you go to greatwesternadventures.com, 
This is the live tracker, and I don't think that I've seen them pop up yet. Have you seen it? Uh, I saw, did I see that dot move, or is that a mile marker? Maybe that's when we actually moved. We're oh. still learning it ourselves. We didn't, maybe. So you can, let's just zoom out real quick. This is super cool. So let's just, I'm gonna reload their webpage just in case that's part of the issue here, but um, greatwesternadventures.com. This is their website. So you can check it out. You got the, the folks right there. You can track their progress. And we will, let's see. They, they, I could also see them all, both waiting to start the tracker until 8 a.m. Yeah, they might. There's a time thing there. Huh. Well, we'll zoom in regardless and see. If not, this probably will just get, get started once they, they get going. But if we zoom in here, um, is this the parking lot? Yeah. So maybe that's one of the, it's a little hard because it stays small. So that might be them at the trailhead possibly. I'm not entirely sure. So anyways, this is the this is the tracker. This is the website. Check it out. Follow along. It says the trackers are live. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Mallory Showalter here says treating us with daily live streams is this like 12 days of trail miss. <laughs> and we might have to rebrand it for Maybe. sure. Let's see. Anyways. Maybe we, could, uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about what Mike's going to be going through this morning because yeah, he doesn't absolutely. actually have the easiest day, I wouldn't say. Yeah, we'll we'll get that pulled up. Um, let's see. Yeah, so he's starting up. I guess we could go to the tracker and show you guys what's happening here. Let's see. We'll zoom all the way out here. You can kind of get a picture of the entire trail real quick across the entire state. So this is what these guys are gonna be doing. So here it is. This is across Arizona, Mexico to Utah, Utah to Mexico. Let's zoom in on Mike and his start here. go so he is up near what the vermilion cliffs national monument runs right along here beautiful area just Very stunning cool in order to get to the start you basically have to drive through utah or to the end and so he how would you describe the start here uh you know i mean it's the the trailhead's pretty flat. It's it's pretty big. Um, they have a really cool terminus. There's actually like a, a poem written mm -hmm. on it. That's a really good read. Um, the Vermilion Cliffs kind of like overshadow everything else. Like they're really epic, especially as the sun's going down, as the sun's setting, it lights them up, and they're just like bright red. Yeah, very cool. It is a bit of a climb getting out of there. Yeah, you can see there's kind of a looks like a bunch of switchbacks here, and then can see over here it's nice and green so this is these are this is a forest up here so it starts it's very deserty when you begin as well um, but then you quickly climb up and he will be heading towards Jacob Lake um, here in the Kaibab National Forest so definitely pine trees up here junipers um, it's kind of a yeah great both of them are going to be climbing yeah. this first morning here yep it feels remote when you're out there. Like you're not passing a lot of roads. You're not even passing like a lot of forest roads. There's just not a lot going on up there. It's pretty relaxing. Yeah. So yeah, there's probably, there are a couple crew access points in here. And then his first major one so on the will cross the be, road. no, there's like a road crossing there. And then let's see, that's only 14 miles in. I think Jacob Lake is more like 30, isn't it? That sounds right. I think a little farther in. Oh yeah. There's the 89. That's a big crossing there. 42 miles. So anyways, he's got, let's see, I forget how far is it to the Grand Canyon. Uh, 
80 miles? About 80. Oh, there we go. Grand Canyon Village. Actually, it looks like it's close to 100. Oh, it is. Yeah. So you got almost 100 miles to um, Grand Canyon. So probably that'll probably be sometime tomorrow. <laughs> I would not imagine he's doing a, a sub 2400 to begin this thing. So. And compare it to the terrain that Ben's going to be going on, relatively speaking, so it's going to be much flatter. Yeah, he's got a more mellow start, most definitely. Ben has got a huge climb to begin the day. Yep. So, um, and that that just kind of goes across the board. Like Ben's first 100 miles are probably going to be tougher than Mike's first 100 miles. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But I think he definitely knows that. Yeah. Uh, that was his strategy for picking south to north as we saw him win the coin toss and choose to go northbound, which I think shocked us a little bit. I think it shocked most people watching. Yeah, like the typical way to go in the fall is southbound. And it's interesting. That is what Mike wanted. So they both got what they wanted, which we talked about this, the coin toss and uh, there's no room for excuses. <laughs> That's what we keep saying. Yep. Uh, let's see. How hot is it there by Mike? That's a good question. Let's take a look. I'm just going to pull up the weather for Kanab, Utah. I want to say that's probably the closest. Yeah, it's probably a pretty good one. Page or Kanab. Um, Page is probably actually a little lower. Kanab. Right now, Kanab's 51. Oh, what about Jacob Lake, Arizona? Mm. That would be a good one to check because he'll be going through there probably this afternoon. Oh, that's right. Buckeye Jen in the chat following this and Biggs. So yeah, Biggs is going on right now. We yep. should do a separate live stream for that one and <laughs> check in on that. Uh, we probably won't pull it into this stream, but. Look at that, 50 degrees right now. 50, okay, so. Uh, high as 66 today. Nice, they have, yeah, they're, the heat will not be a factor at the beginning of this challenge, which I think is music to the Utah boys' ears. Yes. Most definitely. Yeah, he, he made mention, I bled the coin toss, that heat is not his favorite. Well, as we saw in Cocodona, yeah, Mike has struggled with the heat a bit. Um, so he won't have to deal with that for a while. And yeah, maybe he'll cross Grand Canyon in the nighttime. That might be beneficial for him. All these are just blowing my mind every time we talk about how far they're going to get in the first day. Like, it, it's just so crazy. Yeah, like he's probably cross Grand Canyon tomorrow night. Yep. Maybe. Yep. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> uh let's see here we got matt in the chat here let's go boys all right we've got nine minutes to the start um so we oh it looks like we might have we might have mike coming in it looks like we do let's go to them oh they're not up yet excuse me mike can you hear us you might need to unmute yourself there we go. Hello. Hey. hey How's Mike? it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Good. How are you? Doing great. How are yeah. you? Good. We're just driving through a riverbed right now. Oh, man. Are you guys going to make it to the start on time? <laughs> um, it says we'll be there at 7.55. 7.55. All right. Almost there. Almost there. Awesome. Well, it's great to see you pop in here to our stream. He may not have great service. We it's did get him there for a second, which is awesome. We'll, we'll leave it on there just to see if he pops back in. So they're, they're kind of cruising up to the trail. I remember that road being a little washboardy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little slower than anticipated. Yeah. So it looks like he will get there uh, with a few minutes to spare. But that's kind of the nice thing about uh, the Utah border is... You don't have that pre-hike in. You can just roll out right. the door, start running. Yep. I feel like I'm sensing a trend. This is more of Mike's style. The less planning, just yeah. going with the flow. So it worked I th out. I think like you're saying, it, it works for him. And um, yeah, I think he's a guy that's just, he can just grind it out. So Yeah, that's true. Especially in weather like this. It, it might have even looked like it was a little cloudy up there as well. Yeah. So it looks like we did lose him. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see if there is actually, sir. It is, I mean, a little ways out there. Yeah, it's pretty remote. So I, it's kind of cool that he popped in there for a minute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's maybe head back down to Mexico border. 
All right, we're back with you here. How's it going? You just kind of, the nerves are still building a little bit? A little bit, trying to keep myself busy and start organizing a few things in the van, but we're good. We just had a quick check-in with Mike. Uh, yeah, I saw he he was still driving to the start, so a <laughs> little different styles here, which is fun to see. What's funny is that Ben is usually with Mike on his um, adventures, and so <laughs> you've got both styles that come together, right? And so now it'll be interesting to see the, the separate doing them on their own. But Ben is... He, he's a strategizer, but he's also one that he can throw everything out the window and just kind of on the on the fly make changes. So I feel like it's best of both worlds. We're going to hop back with Mike real quick. Mike, are you with us? Oops. Where am I? Where'd I go? My crew, and then there's... Oh, weird. We lost it. One second. Where'd it go? Um, that was weird. Uh, excuse me one second, guys. All right, we're trying to get Mike pulled back in here, everyone. He's kind of going in and out of service, so we'll, we'll keep an eye out, but we have about five minutes to go before the official start of the AZT showdown here. Uh, looks like they might have just pulled up to the trailhead, so we'll see if we can get a little bit of service. Otherwise, Ben is going to be down on the Mexico border, Mike at the Utah border, and... Uh, we've been checking in with Brittany, my, uh, Ben's crew. She is at the trailhead that is about 1.8 miles up from the start line. So we hope to see Ben at least coming through there, you know, probably in about 20 minutes after the start is what we're kind of anticipating. And we will stay live through him coming through that first part. And uh, we appreciate all of you here taking interest in this side of the sport the FKT long trail end of the stick. It's pretty exciting stuff. I apologize if it looks like I'm just sitting here texting. I am checking out some of the alerts along the trail and just seeing there may be a couple sections coming up for Mike with some fire damage. Mm. Uh, I'm seeing there's an alert on, it looks like around mile 50 for a fire. Uh, like current? No, like two weeks ago. Okay. Um, but it said it might have been impacted the trail between 754 and 750. Mm. Uh, extreme caution when hiking, situational awareness, which I actually had a kind of a close call with a dead tree falling like pretty close to me. While like, you were camping or just This is while I was running. running. Wow. And then uh, Flagstaff, like a, like a month or so ago, I was running near mm. near one of the burn areas on a trail that was open. And on the side that was not open, it was an offshoot trail. And I kind of looked over there for a second and then heard a big boom and saw a big dust cloud wow. come up. So there are some hazards that come with that besides just being on rougher trail. Definitely. Um, how are you finding that information for the folks mm. out there? That's kind of uh, interesting. Yeah, so I'm using uh, Far Out, formerly known as Gut Hook, uh, which is... Uh, they're actually they were based out of Flagstaff right outside of Buffalo Park is where they have their headquarters but they do trails specifically or apps specifically for national scenic trails um, what's really nice about it is that if you're through hiking the trail or just hiking anywhere on it you can see water resupplies and get updates on here um, but yeah and then you can also see important notifications if you're going into trails that are closed or if there's burn areas nice um, we might have Mike's crew trying to check in here. The service, I think, is not great up there. So if you can hear us, Mike's crew, we'd love to pull you in. We don't see a video feed yet for you. Um, but, yeah, that's super interesting. I think it's been such a game changer for Arizona Trail folks. Um, 
having that app. Oh. When I hiked the trail in 08, you know, there was nothing like that that existed. And then when I was out there with uh, Michael Versteeg, they had the gut hook version. And man, it was a luxury. Just You just pop your phone out. It kind of alerts you when maybe you're off course. It's incredible. Well, that and you can see like people leave constant reviews on these water sources. So you could look ahead and see. Oh. Ec- Ooh. Real quick. We yep. might have an image here that's. Um, if you guys can hear us, your vertical, uh, orientation might be off. If you can turn your phone sideways, it looks like they have very, very poor service, but you can see a couple images coming through here from, from the Utah border. This is coming from Mike's crew. So (laughs) we know it looks like they made it. They made it. Yeah. They're out of the vehicle, which is great. Um, so we're at least getting a small amount of imagery from them as we are just seconds away from the start now. We're under a minute. It looks like there's a oh, just a couple photos almost coming through here, which is really funny. <laughs> I'll take it, though, you know. Just little insights. Yes. And hopefully as... Uh, yeah, the, the days progress here, we can get some better coverage for all of you each morning. So just if you are tuning in now, we are, it is now 8 a.m. So I guess the, the Arizona Trail Showdown is officially started. I feel like we should have like a pistol that we <laughs> or, shoot off or, or something a here. a bottle of champagne. Yeah, <laughs> maybe at the end. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, I guess the trail officially has begun. So the race is on. They're off. <laughs> They're off. <laughs> Which we, yeah, so Ben starting, I'm assuming Ben's by himself down there at the border is what it seemed like. Well, let's check in. We have Brittany from Ben's crew here. Um, how are you feeling now that it is officially begun? Can you take a deep breath? <laughs> no. No. And not until you see breath. him. I'll take a deep breath on day 12 when we're done. <laughs> that sounds fair. So did yeah. Ben did Ben go down there to the border by himself? Uh, Brandon w- uh, went with him, uh, our videographer. Awesome. So he has Brandon with him, and he shout out to him. We actually have um, two videographers out on the trail. So one is with Ben. We have Brandon, and I believe Derek is with Mike. And we have to uh, give a huge shout out to Mountain Ops for uh, helping with that. And I guess I'll do a couple quick plugs here. We are gonna see Ben here in probably about 20 minutes here uh, with with Brittany's camera here in a minute. Um, But yeah, let me have two quick things to plug um, because we we are putting a lot of effort into these live streams and the the video. So give me one second. I didn't have this part dialed. Okay, so Mountain Ops, they are a nutrition company. They have a lot of great products for um, those of you who are active in the outdoors. Uh, I know that they work a lot with hunters, but also starting to do more with endurance athletes. Mike and Ben are both athletes on their team, and we do have a special 20% off Mountain Ops code for you. So if you want to check out some of their products, please go, and this will help support uh, the coverage so we have a code for Ben. It's all capitals south, the number two north. Mike's code would be north, the number two, and then south, all caps. So you can kind of vote for your favorite runner, pick your athlete, and you get 20% off Mountain Ops products. Um, we are also launching an Arizona Trail Showdown merchandise store. It will be live probably later today. We'll put the link in the description of this video. Uh, over at Mountain Outpost uh, Shopify, and we will have hoodies, some shirts, some hats, and all of that is going to be supporting these daily live streams that we're doing, as well as some of the content that we're going to pull in. And we will be donating a portion of those proceeds split up between uh, RODS, which is the foundation that um, supports adoption of children with Down syndrome. That is the charity that Mike has chosen. Ben has chosen Bigger Than the Trail, which supports uh, mental health and trail running, and then the Arizona Trail Association. So keep an eye out for that. And then, of course, I believe you could also do a Super Chat donation here uh, and 
you know, ask a question to us, give a shout out to someone, we'll read your comment on air. So that's my plug for today. But we right we plan to do these live check ins every morning, nine thirty AM to ten AM. Yeah. I love Are you? Yeah, we thought we'd stop in and see. I love that they have codes. Yeah, for both the codes ben are great. And Actually, it looks like we might have someone. Yep. You have someone nice check. Someone checking in there. How awesome yeah. is this? We've got some friends that showed up to see Ben. Oh, cool! <laughs> I, well, I just met them. They're now my friends. <laughs> that is so cool. We're all on the trail, so it feels like yes, time. trail family. <laughs> nice. Where are you from? Oh, we came from down from Tucson. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. So not that far. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, what a great event. Very yeah. Insp yeah. inspirational. Definitely. <laughs> Excited. We love the AZT stuff. Oh, <laughs> well, we're going to get to know it. Yeah. Oh, well, we hope you love it as much as we do. Thank you. <laughs> Me too. So awesome. what are you guys shooting video on? We're doing so some daily live streams. Oh, is, oh, that, wow. is this Jamil? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my hey, gosh. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> you too so nice <laughs> awesome well <laughs> it looks like a great day out here to make some gains on this trail yeah. Yeah. perfect maybe a little bit of rain coming in but i don't feel like it's going to be too bad <laughs> have you guys done this section of the trail uh we've messed around a little bit we haven't gone down to the border but just kind of around this montezuma's pass area we're a little bit familiar with each section here in the beginning but uh, haven't done it fully through. No. <laughs> yeah. How would you guys describe the Arizona Trail through Southern Arizona? We love it. We think it's great. <laughs> um, I kind of gave a suggestion to Ben on his uh, Instagram to watch out for the Southern Arizona grasses because that was something I had seen in Michael Verstige's uh, interview about something he had underestimated. Yeah. So and we're hoping for something good Something we run into when we're out here. So we were like, well, something to definitely just think about. <laughs> yeah. What is it about the grasses that was so challenging? It seems like it just kind of gets into your skin and might cause mm -hmm. like irritation. And so when I thought about Verstige going through it, I thought about like, uh, you know, long days of that and then multiple days back after back, like it could become something where it was just an irritant, you know? Um, like allergies, if you have allergic reaction. And then also there's like little mesquites and stuff that kind of hide in there. Mm -hmm. So you get some scratching and yeah, over days it can definitely build up, I imagine. Yeah. Interesting but, insights. But as far as like the terrain, I mean, you get through like the different hill hill areas and some water areas and um i mean you ran it so you know but <laughs> um it's just beautiful um especially this time of year when we're starting to cool off i think uh enjoying the um mass areas of views and uh micah mountain is a beast just in that area <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. well and with the speed of these guys i i don't know if you guys caught the racing arizona documentary yet on joe mcconaughey's fkt we haven't so we're excited to see that because yeah. we did watch um over the videos and everything over the actual experience time mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's a it's a must watch but you know he yeah. crossed the Rincons and the Catalinas in one day, which is just like hard to imagine doing like that is such an epic day in and of itself, but to sandwich it between doing everything else that you have to do on this FKT attempt is just incredible. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing to think of them being able to do it so quickly for sure. I mean, when we go out to areas, it takes us, you know, <laughs> probably like half a day <laughs> to do a section and um it's just impressive definitely for sure well enjoy your morning out there we'll uh we'll be continuing to tune in here as we wait for ben all Excellent. right yeah. <laughs> awesome how are those clouds looking Brittany? a little darker actually let me flip you around 
That's a, coming in a little more. Oh, yeah. I can see border patrols there. <laughs> Building up. Oh, so that's one yeah. thing about this yeah. section. They've been, they've been hanging out since we got here. Yeah, keeping their eye on you. <laughs> Look at that scud. Yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah, did you have any you have any border patrol stories from your time on the Arizona Trail? Uh met a few of them, but what really stuck out about this section is at night, if you're walking through it, you're just gonna get constant <laughs> flashes from game cameras. And it scared the hell out of you, every single one of them. Uh but yeah, I think oh, I wanna wow. say, say there was like five different times where we got lit up through And like, those are border patrol placed cameras probably. I believe so. Yeah. Yep. I didn't I didn't stick around to inspect them too much just like put... monitoring <laughs> well it's kind of intense um when i went through um you know it's just kind of the nature and it kind of ties in a little bit like the arizona trail and stuff with you know the larger issues down yeah. by the border but yeah. when i went through the Wachukas, there were a couple of areas where you know you could see evidence of of like migrant crossings mm. coming through oh you know, like cans of red bull absolutely everywhere jugs um, of water there'd be yeah just like there was one section i came upon and there was like 70 backpacks so people like you know they're they're coming across the border they're climbing up into the mountains probably because it's more remote and harder to get to um and they're i don't know if they're like just stashing or like abandoning certain things and changing and then continuing on i'm not sure why that became like a dumping ground but very interesting. But there was just a lot of, yeah, random stuff up there. Huh. Um, and I came across two groups of people, actually, when I was on. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Border Patrol at various points. Right. Yeah, right. I think one time they came with sirens blazing, uh, after, coming up to me, to you, yeah, yeah. To, to figure out. I probably tripped some kind of a, a camera or something. I mean, like, like you said before, though, there was not nearly the amount of traffic on the Arizona Trail when you were doing it. So yeah. it's probably stuck out a little more yeah definitely they're like what are you doing again like this is the, this is a trail what's happening <laughs> yeah not official yet uh Brittany, is there a is there a big balloon above you just curious like uh it looks like maybe it looks like a weather balloon tethered to something at the trailhead nothing um, i don't see anything oh, okay when we <laughs> Last Did time I was something? there, well, last time I was there, there was probably like maybe almost a quarter mile lifted up massive weather balloon. Mm. We were told it had infrared cameras on it. And so it's like looking around at night to see surveillance. Like, yep. Mm. Heat signatures. Uh, I'll, I'll walk over closer to the trailhead and see. Man, it is pretty out there this morning. Yeah. So he's going to be coming. He's probably. Right here. So, yeah, there's the, the trail he'll be coming up. So, he had a little bonus to do. Would you, uh, would you personally rather hike the extra 1.8 miles before or after the effort? <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, I wouldn't mind getting it out of the way at the beginning. Um, like, it will be nice for Ben when he get, gets to the Utah border and is just absolutely done. Yeah. Just like fall into his van. Yep. Uh, whereas Mike will have to trudge, <laughs> trudge the one point eight back up to to be fully done. And more importantly, six hundred feet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think the the oh yeah we're seeing some great views here from Brittany of the the trail itself. Um, that. You can see that southern Arizona grass is, uh, and that did really affect Versteeg. It was surprising. Was it? Yeah. Pretty overgrown. It was, I think also, you know, what happens in the fall is, you know, these grasses are growing up all summer and then they die off mm. in the fall, but they've all produced seed pods too. So those little seed pods, they would, you know, they are like biologically designed to stick to things like to animal fur and so they would just get on his socks and they would get in his shoes and they'd be stickery mm. and they would just he'd have like hundreds of them and he's trying to pick them out constantly they're just annoying and then also i think you know it, yeah maybe he just had a reaction to it but it it was like irritating his entire feet had like a rash on them so we'll see how that affects things and i feel like we got a decent amount of rain this monsoon especially down there yeah they're they're probably pretty high i think it's the honestly the whole southern half of the state from like 
the superstitions all the way south. I think he was pretty much, you know, varying levels of that. Is that green? Is that green? Number one. That's mile marker. Oh. Uh, I can't tell. That might be a tracker. We're trying to figure out this tracking real quick. We can go to the website. We, I don't know that I see anything going live yet, but maybe I'm also, it could be user error. Oh, there's Montezuma's Pass. So crew one. Oh, is that? Oh, is this the tracker? It has a number on it, number two. Yeah. So then Ben Light. Is that is number one? That him, that's maybe number one. So they probably only update every like 10 minutes. It's and let's probably see if we getting have... kind of close. If that's, yeah. if that's him. Oh, let's, let's make sure we don't miss him here. Oh, yeah, there we go. So it looks like the trackers are working. If you hit the, if you hit this little plus, it kind of zooms in on him. So there's Mike. And then if we go all the way here, there's Ben. And then we got the crew ones too. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Right. So that sense. does work. So we're going to stick on the Brittany's cam here, Ben's crew. She's heading up the trail a little bit, keeping an eye out for Ben. She's probably going to run him into the trailhead. They're at Montezuma's Pass uh, down by the Mexico border. Again, if you're tuning in, we're just 15 minutes into the showdown. 800 miles of Arizona bliss. <laughs> they're both they're both probably at least a mile in. Oh yeah. At least a mile in at this point. Um we're going to stay live through Ben Light coming through Montezuma's Pass, so stay tuned. Um maybe till about 8:30 or so if you guys have any questions for us. But we appreciate all of you being here. We've got 141 of you, which is awesome to see the interest in this. And want to make sure all of you know, we will be going live every single day with hopefully views like this. Uh, we want to do as much live check-ins as possible, either from Ben, Mike themselves, or from their crew. So we have links set up for all of them to check in with us. And we're just going to make it a, a daily habit for the next 12 or 13 days. And I mean, just with the amount of progress that they're going to be making like day to day, there's going to be some big changes in where they're at scenery and uh, what their, what their day looks like. They might be switching up strategies quite a bit. Yeah. It's gonna be fun to keep track of. And we also have a couple videographers out there. So if we can get some footage from each day, we're going to kind of do a daily recap. Um, we'll probably put some spreadsheets together of their daily mileage. I would imagine mm -hmm. seeing how they're progressing and, how they're stacking up against the current record holders as well. I think it's right. going to be fun to watch this unfold in real time. And I don't remember about the, I, I think with the wall, the beginnings changed a little bit. Oh, yeah. I don't know the details on that. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Because they did shut down this, this terminus for a while uh, due to border work, wall construction. Mm -hmm. And I have not seen it since... Uh, <laughs> but I imagine it's in the same spot. I mean, it's more or less the same. Trail I did hear there. something about that because I do. I did see some pictures of the, that they were blasting the hills and putting that border wall in, which is kind of crazy. Like it really changes the date. I mean, when we both did it, I mean, you're just on this like grassy hillside with like endless amazing views everywhere. And there's just like a kind of like a little like janky barbed wire fence. Oh yeah barbed wire fence and the obelisk was on the Mexico side. So right. You had to crawl through the fence to like tag the obelisk. Right. Which is the term, the Southern terminus. Down there because of the construction. Um, they so, yeah. we'll hey, see. we're filling, we're filling a few drops here. Okay. <clears throat> and yeah, you can so, see the clouds shrouding the yeah. peak behind. Yeah. <laughs> That 
climb might be an interesting one for Ben. Oh, that is pretty. Why did it go upside down? <laughs> <laughs> You're, that's all good. Super pretty down there. And you can see, I think Miller Peak is enveloped in clouds. Like yeah. That is that's cool. Crazy. Yeah, if the rain, we were talking earlier this morning, I'm not sure if it'll be cold enough for snow up there, but probably anything's possible. I mean, yeah, I remember when I was coming down that section in November, there, like without any rain, or anything, like basically there was a layer of frost over everything when we woke up. It gets very cold up there. Oh, yeah, you're over 9,000 feet. Does he actually summit or does it bypass? it's oh. it goes just below miller peak it's not quite the summit i think it's like oh. point 0.1 or point 0.2 away okay and then the summit's at about 9400 feet something like that that sounds about so, right and i think you get to 9300 so maybe okay. it's like it's just shy of the summit wow he'll be right up there <laughs> yeah huh. it's pretty low I'm hoping it doesn't pick up. Yeah, me too. Brittany, do you this know how... Uh, oh, sorry to interrupt. I was saying this would actually be great running weather. Great. Oh, yeah. Ben <laughs> loves it. Oh, it's coming a little stronger. Uh, ah. As soon as oh. I said that. <laughs> the rain is picking it? up. Oh, no. Yeah, I can oh. hear it a little bit. Oh, we had a question in the chat here. Explain how to find the tracker. This is from Ingrid. Thanks for hopping in. So if you go to greatwesternadventures.com, that is where you'll be able to find it. I can maybe even drop it in there. Oh, oh I can hear that rain now. Sounds like it's coming down. <laughs> oh, wow. So I just dropped the link in the chat. You can go ahead and check that out. It sounds kind of soothing, actually. It is. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's not. <laughs> Brittany, do you know how much water he uh, he was taking out? Oh, I guess he doesn't have any, or maybe he does he, have a he bottle. Has one five milliliter bottle in okay. a waste okay. pack. Got it. Oh, man. Would you, would you want it to be raining? I mean, <laughs> um, personally, probably like, not. <laughs> probably not ideal. I mean, I'm a would, desert rat, but I mean, I would take it over it's the fine. heat, over a hot day. Uh, probably. Uh, it causes issues. I mean, I guess if you're not backpacking, like that's that's not an unsupported route, so they don't have to worry about their sleeping bag, like their sleep yeah. system getting wet. Like you I have mean, that out. Yeah, the rain would be fun. You know, Miller Peak shrouded in clouds, maybe a chance of snow up high. That would be a pretty fun day. Yeah, that would be a great adventurous start. Maybe not the whole trip. Yeah, not, really. not the whole trip. <laughs> um, no, not the whole trip. But yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, man, what an epic adventure! This is gonna be fun for them. Charlie Seymour, shout out in the chat here. Let's go, he says. Fun, fun times. That's why we do it. <laughs> yes, Ben said his intentions were to um, be healthy, enjoy it, and have fun. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Yes. That's great. Ooh, that's a little cold <laughs> when you're not running. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Might need to wipe the uh, your your uh, camera a little bit. There we go. That's better. Thank you. I think we lost your sound. It's probably challenge. There we go. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. We got C Town fan in the chat here. Hello, folks. Have a fun run. Jason Wooden is asking uh, Brittany, how far is Ben going today? I think 
she say like 60, 60 miles? So, which would be getting into uh, just the mountains just past Patagonia. Santa Rita's. Santa Rita's. I would imagine somewhere in there. Yep. Maybe not quite to Kentucky camp. I think that's maybe like 80 miles. Okay. All right, so it looks like Brittany's taking shelter in the van temporarily here, waiting for Ben to come through. She is at Montezuma's Pass, which is near the border with Mexico, and you can see just epic vistas now, especially with that rain rolling in. Gosh, that is pretty, Jamil. <laughs> it is a great way to start this thing. Ben is just absolutely loving this weather, I'm sure. Yep. You know he's loving it. This yeah. is ideal. Oh, we've got <laughs> we've got Levi Light Gaming here in the chat, and uh, <laughs> hi Levi. And uh, Levi says here, Brittany said that her jacket was a windbreaker, but I told her it was a rain jacket. <laughs> and tell him I'm soaking wet. It did not. not. <laughs> she is soaking wet, <laughs> Levi. <laughs> Thanks for joining <laughs> us. So I think I'm right. <laughs> but it looks good <laughs> yeah you gotta look good doing it gotta good, look good crewing out there it's true and it will help with the wind so <laughs> Brittany, britney is this the first race uh rain that you've gotten since you've been in arizona oh yeah yep okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I was planning on heat, but I packed all my cold weather gear too. So we're prepared. And we have heat in the van and AC. So <laughs> we just, we're having some fun in the chat here with Levi. This is great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He, he'll probably be on every morning. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess he's at school. He will have school next week. So. <laughs> oh, he's not in school right now, fall break or something. Levi, we're going to um, know if you're oh, on. Today's Saturday. Oh, that's but right. It it's Saturday, break. though. Yeah. All right, oh, he getting... does have fall break Monday and Tuesday. So, yeah. Uh, we'll okay. All right. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. We're in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we got Sea Town Fan. Arizona is so beautiful. Looking forward to seeing it on this adventure. Yeah, the trail definitely goes through some of the highlights of the state. I think there's a couple places where, like, maybe Sedona, you can art make a couple arguments for places that it goes around. But for the most part, I think it, it highlights most of the cool, like, geological features in the state. I have a bunch more questions I want to ask now, but I feel like he's probably going to be coming through any minute. Yeah, I know we're close to getting close to 30 minutes in. Um, any minute, but yeah, I mean, feel free to ask it. Don't hold uh, back. Did you have a favorite section besides like outside of the Grand Canyon? Obviously it's pretty epic. Grand Canyon is epic. Um, Man, I mean, crossing, uh-oh, we just lost our feed. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, hopefully we get our feed back here in a second. Um, my favorite section, man, the Rincons were pretty epic, I would say. Um, That's probably one of my favorites. I could tell you my least favorite section. What was that? Matazel's, hands down. Oh. Uh, it was so hard. Yeah, And it was. I also thought I was being stalked by a bear one night. You probably were. Um, there was like... <laughs> these like claw scratch marks in the ground oh there he is oh the man himself all right oh i need to unmute him ben hey how you doing buddy, you love, how you doing? loving this weather actually i'm enjoying it believe me 
I'm trying to decide to put a rain jacket on, but I'm actually really content being soaked. So, you should definitely bring one. Yeah, thanks for coming out. That's yeah, awesome. Good to see you. <laughs> I appreciate it. What a great start to this run. <laughs> Pretty interesting. <laughs> I'm going to grab... I can't use my phone when it's raining because all the drops on the screen. Oh, and yeah. So, I'm gonna. I've had these from from the spine ice. Let's see if it fits. I don't know. I just want to see if it'll fit, and because when the screen gets wet, then I can't like tap it or do anything. So, are you frozen? Or this is frozen? It's okay. Looks looks like a lot of stuff that is very organized and tightly packed into that van. Absolutely. <laughs> I would have joined you guys earlier when I got to the rim or the ridge, but I couldn't mess with my phone because of the uh, rim. Yeah, don't so don't overly worry about the live stream. I feel like you've got a bigger task at hand. Well, he does. Thought I'd have fun with it. We've been having fun with Levi in the chat already. Yep. Oh, dang. Hey, buddy. I love you. Don't worry about me. The three, the, the three theme words are to stay healthy, to enjoy the journey, and to have fun. <laughs> well said. Cameraman. And look good while doing it. <laughs> and look good. And look, look good while doing it. <laughs> Don't fall over. Nice job. <laughs> Travis Longcar in the chat says, definitely have to pour the contents of that Gatorade cooler on Ben if he wins this thing. <laughs> ice cold water. Just ice cold water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind being the underdog. Gives, gives more fuel to the fire. Who says you're the underdog? Now go. For Get going. Mike's time. already three miles in. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, he has a lot of flat to run for the next 300 miles. He Good. hates rocky. He, he, you don't understand. I ran with him, and he hates rocks. <laughs> and he's running the Arizona Trail. <laughs> Which is mostly rocks. So, it's so, yeah. like, so like, the, the thing, that what I'm probably going to tell him when we pass is, oh, my gosh, you should see how rocky – your next section is <laughs> you will. while he's up there on that buttery smooth trail okay okay go 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 ben go godspeed ben there he Love goes you, baby and there's brandon right there with him yeah. Well, let me get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a quick <laughs> selfie. <laughs> Love it. One, two, three. Good. Go get it. Levi. Would you have a quick question? What kind of shoes is Ben wearing? I'm assuming ultras. Yes, Ultra. I I actually don't know which he chose. What shoes are you wearing, babe? <laughs> oh, my God. Olympus. He's Olympus. wearing Olympus. <laughs> Can we get a quick close-up of those? No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on, you can run and catch them. 20 miles. In 20 miles, I'll get a close-up. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Well, this has been great. Um, I guess you're going to be heading off to the next location on the other side of the mountain range. Yep. The Parker Lake. Probably near Park Parker, Canyon Parker Canyon Lake. Parker Canyon. I'm not sure. There might be one spot to go before Parker Canyon Lake, I think. Mm, okay. Like right when you exit the mountains, there's like a, trailhead. a trailhead. Yep. And then I think maybe six more miles after that will be Parker Canyon Lake. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. spot, by the way. Um, just yeah, this okay. kind of mid-sized lake. You'll be right above it. There's a great trailhead there. So. Should Beautiful. Be a, should be a nice spot for you.
Um, anything else, or should we end this one? Uh, I I think we're good. Thank you to Brittany for taking the effort to check the, check in with us this whole time. This has been really cool having actual live footage. Yeah. And... Maybe we could awesome. maybe we could check in with Brandon real quick and get his uh, oh, yeah. insights from the border. I would love to hear how the start went since we didn't get a, a camera there. Yeah. Hey. Change of pace. Brandon, if we could see, they want to hear from you what you thought of the start and at the border. Um, it was, it was a fun downhill. Um, the uphill got me personally, but Ben just crushing it. He kept it like a ten minute pace the whole time. So, yeah, I had to catch up with him at the end. <laughs> but nice. the border was cool. We got some videos down there. Um, yeah, it's it's great. We got some. It's beautiful out here. So yeah. Yeah. Now, has the has the border wall made its way to the southern terminus, or is it still a barbed wire fence? So it's a barbed wire fence, and then right where the border, uh, what is that thing called? The terminus, like pillar thing, o yeah. obelisk yeah, or something. So, yeah, there's like there's like a hundred feet of bit like the big wall, and then it stops, and then it's a fence again. So, so oh. there's just a, a gap in the fence. It's literally just a <laughs> tiny little gap in the fence. Wow. It was, it's kind of funny. It looks funny out there. Interesting. Well, we'll look forward to maybe some of your shots. Maybe we can bring a shot of the start in tomorrow morning. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, send me the email and I'll Google Drive it to you. Sounds great. Cool. Thanks so much, Brandon. And thank you, Brittany. Yeah. You're welcome. Absolutely. All right. Until tomorrow. <laughs> All righty. Uh, we'll check back in with that team tomorrow. So like we said, 9.30 a.m. Pacific every morning for this entire challenge. Uh, find us here on the Air of Epa Running YouTube channel, either myself, Bryce, or the both of us, depending on the day. And we are looking forward to this journey with all of you. Uh, what else was I going to say? If you want to head over to Mountain Ops, uh, support the stream. We will have our – and use code, what, south to north or north to south – uh, we will have our merch store up later today, so please check that out. Support what we're doing to bring this coverage to you. And the only other thing, I was going to check in with the tracker real quick. So one more quick reminder before we sign off. If you guys want to go to greatwesternadventures.com, you can track this 24 hours a day. And it's really easy. This is their website. You scroll down to the tracking page. And you go ahead, and if you want to find where Ben is, just click this little search. It will zoom right to where he's at. You can see he just passed the Montezuma's trailhead. Let's go zoom in on Mike. And he is, looks like, on his way up these switchbacks, moving right along already. So you can see where they started. And if you want to come out and meet these guys, you can find out where their crews are at. You go ahead and click the search bar on their crew, and you can see this is... Ben's crew is crew number one, and Mike's crew, crew number two. And just a quick reminder, if you do want to come out and join these guys for a stretch, we do ask that you are fully self-supported and have your own shuttles if you're going to go point to point. You know, don't be a liability for these guys. They have enough to worry about. Any closing thoughts? Let's see. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how far they push today. I'm curious to see how the rain effects ben i'm curious to see if mike encounters any weather um uh, yeah looking forward to tomorrow uh bets on who will make it further in the first 24 hours mileage wise mike yeah i think that's a guarantee <laughs> all righty oh thank you so much quick shout out here to paul the thing giving us the super chat donation here. We appreciate it. That is another way to support the stream. You guys can donate. We'll read your comments. We'll show your comments on screen. Um, appreciate that. 10 pounds, super appreciative. We will see you guys tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in. All right, thanks everyone.